Hey, what is up guys? It is your voice feed here and today we're gonna be looking at a game between Team Secret and Thunder Predator. I'm sure a lot of you guys had a blast watching this game whether or not you did it live or afterwards in client whatever highlights, you know, some noob from UA action, whatever it was. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we're gonna be looking at this game specifically following Matama Man's Monkey King and I just wanna, I, I don't know, like everything that Secret does just seems to work. No matter what they do, it works. And so yeah, we're gonna be looking at Matoma Man's Monkey King, see how he's the anchor of the team, and really get into what they do right, and uh, why Thunder Predator just simply can't compete. But yeah, if you guys are excited for this video, smash the like button, subscribe, and one more quick note, if you want to know more about Team Secret versus Thunder Predator, there's going to be a lot of content about this series in particular on the website. I did a draft analysis for this game there, and for the other game in this series, I'm going to do a full replay analysis on the website for that as well. And so there's going to be a few videos. I might even do a draft analysis. So there literally might be three videos, definitely two videos about the series on the website that will never come to YouTube. And so if you're excited for that, go check that out. Sign up right now. Click the link down below and I'll see you there so we can watch Team Secret and Thunder Predator. All right, getting into it. So the first thing we can want to know is how they set up this lane, because really, this is some advanced Dota stuff. I'm gonna give you guys some advanced Dota knowledge here. The first thing I'd say that I really think was great was that they, they kind of pranked this Bristle. I genuinely believe that Bristle did not see this tri-lane coming, mainly because he goes stick, and, you know, he's gonna get stick charges in this lane. Tusk cast, you know, tag team pretty often, and Charger cast enchant pretty often. Monkey King stuns relatively often, and so it's not a horrible stick lane by, uh, by any means, but... I will say that this tri-lane, I really do believe, caught Thunder Predator off guard. Even though Tusk tri-lanes are, I don't know, I guess I'll say a staple of Dota, tag team and auto attacks, it's <laughs> pretty freaking good. Uh, besides that, nope, it just didn't seem like they saw this lane coming, and yeah, it ended up really crushing them. You could see that throughout this entire lane, it's very hard for Bristle to do almost anything, and even after stepping up for only a second... MJZ just dies. And this is a huge start for Matumba Man and Secret. And you can see that the reason why this lane works is because they have a very solid pairing. They have tag team with a disabled support and a monkey king. And anytime you can set up this lane in a tri lane, you're basically going to be guaranteed kills as long as you guys work together. The next thing we see from Matumba Man is an instant Orb of Venom pickup. The way you know to buy Orb of Venom is basically if your lane is going to essentially be guaranteed favorable. I see a lot of people make the mistake, even as Monkey King, where they're going to have a mediocre matchup. Maybe, for instance, they're laning against, you know, Nature's Prophet and a Tusk, or Nature's Prophet and a Skyrath Mage, and it's very unlikely you're going to build Jingu. Let's say your support's even an AA, and you're simply not going to be able to close the gap, and they'll still buy Orb of Venom. And this is a major throw on heroes like Slark, on heroes like Monkey King and Ursa. Orb of Venom does not give you damage. Sure, on Monkey King, there is this weird advantage to Orb of Venom that does let you trade to some extent, where good players against Monkey King, what they'll do is kite you when you have about two stacks, and then you'll actually die because of this in a lot of scenarios. And so Orb of Venom can prevent that from happening, making trades more favorable. And so I respect Orb of Venom on Monkey King a lot more than heroes like Ursa and Slark. The next thing we see Matama Man do that is expertly done is leave the wave in a very important position. The most important part to try lanes by a large margin, it's not even close. No, it's not kills. I pranked, it's not kills. You know, kills are great and you want to go for the kills but you can only go for kills if the wave is not under the safe lane tower. If the wave is under the safe lane tower, you can't go for kills. It's just not going to work, right? You'll die to the tower. It's that simple, at least this early into the game. And so you'll see what he does here is very, very nice. He drags the wave back and out of tower range. And I know it's like speed. I know to do this. But do you? And would you actually do it in this tri lane setting? Because this, that small decision can entirely change how a lane goes. It literally can entirely change how the lane goes because now, let's say he pushed it in and he brought that wave under the tower. Then the next wave would have also gone under the tower and then they would no longer have any kill threat onto the enemy lane. And now the, the goal of Team Secret is actually very simple. Matama Man wants to keep the lane back, right? And then the supports are gonna prevent the pull. And essentially it's gonna be a rinse repeat of this over and over and over again. And yeah, at about the five minute mark, <laughs> the bristle just completely leaves. He's like, oh, I'm done with this garbage. This is just, this is just terrible. And now <laughs> this guy, my man's game is so GG, dude. He's having to 1v1 an edge creep 
which is just if you guys have ever played dota 2 you know good game you should try it out uh it's not fun and he just gets solo killed by <laughs> an inch Woo! his game is so done it is so done and on top of that you might be like oh but but art isn't mars getting shut down well the thing is you know a veno shaker is gonna have a much harder time getting kills in the lane and keeping the lane back right they're gonna have a much harder time because mars is a hero that naturally does well in these lanes he has range creep secure melee creep secure a damage block ability from the front right from the front which is great and so essentially this hero is designed to be put in the scenario and i talk about this in the draft analysis which is why i think they've really expertly you know execute on their drafts they really have a very clear idea of what their heroes can do and they optimize their drafts around that and uh yeah that, that's kind of what happens here they get this this really solid lane for the mars and you know you might be saying oh it's it's not that good he's like bottom mission net worth you know but look at bristle this is the main thing look at bristle look at him and then look at the levels the levels are by far the most important part bristle is level four mars is level five and a half that is a massive difference you might be saying oh it's a level and a half a level that I have is the complete difference between who is going to get multiple teamfight wins or not. And if you don't believe me on that note, that uh, <laughs> levels is everything, then take a look at this clip. By the way, I'd like to say that Mars in particular has one of the hardest level 6 spikes in Dota, and so sacrificing this hero is completely fine. Mars is a hero that has no problem playing from behind. It doesn't care if it only has 1500, 2000 net worth. It doesn't matter it can solo kill people that even are a thousand net worth ahead of him. Well, actually, I shouldn't say that. Often, as long as you have a plus one, you'll be able to get kills. It's actually pretty hard to solo kill with the items he actually, you know, currently has. But yeah, with the Tusk, it's a quick kill onto the Venomancer. Very well executed spear hit and a nice kill. The next thing I'd like to go over is his skill build. Definitely very different from what you'd expect. And even the item build is different. So let's kind of go over what's different and why it's different number one he maxed stun now i'm sure there's other players that have been doing this i haven't been really up to date exactly on everything monkey king but what i will say is there's also a lot of players maxing out the w that i know for sure reason being is the slow doubles at level two which is incredibly good compared to the stun scaling it doesn't double you know it's not even close to doubling the damage doesn't almost double the stun doesn't almost double but the slow does and so it's a much better scaling ability with that second point so it's very common to see at least two points in primal spring he doesn't go for that at all he goes the complete lane bully build even though the bristle left but i will say that he used this to bully the veno out of top a little bit when veno came up top on top of that his build is obviously very fight oriented it's skirmish oriented maxing your your e it's not horrible for fights but compared to something like like if you let's say you go battle fear right you go phase boots then aura of corrosion then battle fury you're going to do a lot less damage then a Midas, because attack speed on Monkey King with a lot of points in your E is going to do significantly more damage, which I really do like. He clearly is going a skirmish-based build, and you can see it's going to cause him to just be able to bully out people like Bristle if he wants to chase. Now, in that case, he didn't have vision of the supports, or he knew they were bottom, and so he backs off. But I will say, I just I just like this build. I really do. I see a lot of these Monkey Kings going Battle Fury. It's not bad. Battle Fury is good. It works very well with the ulti, and you farm very quickly. But... They often lack attack speed. They have a lot of attack speed issues. And then you can't really fight that well. You can still throw out autos and your ulti to zone people. And that's great. It is. It's like the most important part of Monkey King, which is your ability to zone out portions of the map, right? Protect your teammates, uh, you know, isolate heroes. That's the most important part to, to Monkey King. We'll talk about that later on. But I think Midas is, is just incredibly good for that early game attack speed. Now, minute 13 here, he slows down the pace of the game. Uh, this is something a lot of carry players struggle with. Guys, it's okay to farm. Now, I know it's like speed, we know. Like, you always say this, get a million CS, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, but what do I actually mean this by this in this case? What I mean by it's okay to farm is that when you go farming items, you go Midas into Battle Fury, it's fine to let your team die. Like, it's okay. In fact, Team Secret, what they should likely be doing, besides the fact that they just set up a kill around him, which is what makes them so unique, they do weird stuff like that, is he can push in the top side of the map because he can lay in top. If there's a hero like Bristle top and he can go 1v1 against the Bristle or even set up a kill into the Bristle, it's great for him to be top. Let me give a couple more scenarios as we watch this bottom fight. What I mean by this, a couple other scenarios, is let's say you're playing right Slark and the enemy team has a Jug, okay? If you constantly are on the opposite side of the jug, you lose this 
huge value in playing Slark, which is the fact that you can build up a couple Essence, right? Hit him three, four times, pop a Q on him, and then run away. He can't spin on you. He can't Omni Slash you because you're ulti and you're Pounce. It doesn't work. And so you can bully him out of the lane alone. And that's incredibly valuable. And that's not exactly what Matoma Man did there, but it's kind of like, it was like a different replica of it, where if the Bristle ever overextends, not only is Matama Man farming Ancients in the Triangle, which is just good in itself, it's just useful on Monkey King, he also can be in position to kill the hero that he pseudo counters. I wouldn't say you just like hard solo kill Bristle, you don't. That's not how the, the, this matchup works, unless you're like, I don't know, going like Witchblade, I don't know, something weird. But yeah, that's not how the Midas build works, at least. My next favorite play is this Roshan attempt. This is what makes Secret maybe one of the best teams in the world. I just love this so much. I love this so much. First things first, their team is really good at Roshan. And so anytime you, you recognize that your team is good at Roshan, which is something you need to pay attention to in the drafting phase, you have to pay attention to also double damage runes. Yeah, like, it, it's... Honestly, I'm not going to even say that I I really would pay attention to it before watching this replay, but now that I have, it's something I'm going to, you know, communicate to my teammates in the future. I'm going to keep in mind, because literally based off a of double damage rune that the Mars scouted out, right? So the Mars calls out that there's a double damage here, which he obviously knew. He was clicking by it. They go and take the Roche. Now, they also got an Earthshaker pickoff, which is great in itself. I also think Shaker doesn't have Blink yet. Yeah, so Shaker is just pretty underwhelming. They don't even have Echo Slam at that right they do have their other spells so they can maybe skirmish but right they don't have the shaker and they have a double damage and yeah they just walk into the pit obviously as i said you need a team that sort of can roche they have enchanters to tank it they have mars to tank it and they have a double damage they, and you know they even have tusk tag team which they don't even use here but the most important part of this clip you know besides the dd which i think is very advanced right as an offlane player scouts it out right if you're an offlane player scout it out for your carry support player Get out for your carry. If you have that Roshan team comp, get your team to Rosh. But the favorite part of this clip is this. Huh? What do you guys think? What do you think? You like this? It's good? Yeah, so really bizarre, right? Looks very bizarre. It's like, eh, there's no one there. Why would he ult it? It's because people might be there. And the most important item in Dota is Aegis by a large margin. Not only does it give you a bunch of gold when you kill Roshan, but the ability to have two lives is stupid. It's broken. And I'm just gonna keep saying it like this until everyone really starts valuing Roshan. He has no problem committing in a 110 second cooldown to secure Aegis. Now, of course, when that cooldown is down, what is he gonna do? He's gonna slow down the pace of the game, farm up, wait till the enemy team overextends, right? Now the enemy team might actually even overextend. They'll be like, oh, Monkey King has no ulti, and they can take a well-positioned fight under their vision, which I think is another advanced idea as well. But nonetheless, just be willing to use big spells to secure Roche, and then when you don't have those big spells, slow down the pace of the game, tell your team, hey, let's sit on our side of the map, don't do anything crazy, at least with the carry, right? If you have a bunch of skirmish heroes who want to go for a pickoff, like, look where Nisha is, all right, he's in the enemy triangle. He doesn't feel like he can really die. It's very hard for the enemy team to actually kill him. He's posturing very aggressive. So, you know, that is an option. I love this guy. <laughs> uh, I was verbally pleased like this. You know, what does that mean? Like sex is great and all. But have you ever watched Team Secret Retreat? I mean, that's what this is like. Oh, I actually, man, that makes I don't know. It's just this. This is the type of thing I live for. You know, I don't know. I don't know why I'm on this earth, but it might be because of Team Secret's ability to retreat right at the same time. I mean, look at this clip, OK? This shows you good players. This shows a profound understanding of what we call Dota 2. They understand the importance of cooldowns and Monkey King ulti. Their team comp revolves around Monkey King ulti. Sharding people into Monkey King ulti. Mars trapping people in Monkey King ulti. It's, you know, they have a Monkey King. You have to play around it to a large extent. And that's what they do here. But they go on the Bristle and they weren't able to keep him in the, the ulti. And now immediately, without hesitation, they all run away. Every single one of them runs away. They all run away. Oh my god, what a shards. That was actually insane. But the point is, <laughs> they all run away. Look where they go. This is what you call tier 1 Dota and top tier players. Look at where Nisha goes, okay? Immediately to top. Because he's going to look to split the map. Basically, what he's trying to do is say, okay, if you guys are going to push in mid and take control of our triangle, which is the obvious play, it's very obvious that Thunder Predator, when you win a fight like that, or you take the tier one, you win a fight, you're strong, you have a death ball team comp. I mean, their team comps designed to just try to run you over. 
right? Take over portions of the map, control them. You're going to go top. But most players, what would they have done? What would they have done? Be honest, guys. They would have walked here and been like, Tusk, you suck. Monkey King, what a shit ulti. You know, <laughs> something like that. <laughs> but yeah, no, you want to split up the map. Now, Shaker, being the beast that he is, reads this play, which don't worry in your pubs, this won't happen. If the enemy team pushes mid and you go top, no one's TPing in to read you until you get to like seven, six, seven AK MMR. It's just not going to happen. Like, I'm, I'm being very real with you. And, you know, Nisha even sees that coming. He reads it and they kind of quickly dismantle the enemy team's push, right? They split up the map and this is key because if you die and you get picked off and then you let the enemy team kind of just like sit on your hill and you don't push in any waves, it becomes very hard to get out of your base. You can see the bristle cutting top wave, right? They're trying to secure uh, some map control here from Thunder Predator, which is dope. But look, Zai's going bottom, he starts cutting bottom wave, right? Nisha went top, the Enchantress pushed in mid, and then obviously Monkey King just jungled, he doesn't want to put himself in harm's way. You know, Mars doesn't, Zai doesn't care if he dies, right? If they, if they decided to smoke and kill him, he doesn't care. Same thing with the Ench, it doesn't really matter. Uh, as long as they're pushing at the lanes, preventing Thunder Predator from completely collapsing their side of the map. And so, yeah, then you can see a lot of split pushing going on. Basically, Team Secret's looking to split up the enemy team. They're trying to split them up, get them to separate so that they can make a movement. All right, and, and that's kind of what we see here. The Bristol goes bottom, DP goes top, and let's see how Seeker plays around this. So they don't instantly smoke. It's going to be very hard for them to actually uh, make a movement here. They only have vision of Bristol and DP, and they could actually meet up at mid tower. So they're a little bit afraid of that. They don't want to run into them at the mid tower. Now, here is the most important fight of the game, and I really mean that. So the key here is understanding positioning, right? What does Team Secret need to do to win the fight? What is their win condition? I said it before, it's Monkey King ulti. All they need to do to win the fight, and I, I really, I, it's not simple, the execution is difficult, but the idea is simple. They need to isolate someone and use Monkey King ulti to completely separate them from their team, right? That should be the goal of Team Secret. And so how are they going to do that, right? How are they going to do that? Mars Spear, and that's it, right? So as long as they land a good Mars Spear, they can commit. Now here, the Bristle doesn't get stunned, and so they don't want to commit on him. On top of that, Bristle has Aegis, and so... You know, it's an even worse idea to commit on him if he does not get stunned. But you'll see it's going to kind of be a bit of a rinse repeat as they try to zone him off. Looks pretty bad for Team Seeker here, but unfortunately, I think the Death Prophet kind of overestimated herself a little bit. Uh, she did have cheese and yules, and so to be fair, if she got it off here, maybe they could turn the fight. But even then, uh, it's very hard for any of these heroes to actually fight in this scenario. You know, they can't really get through the Mars ulti. They're kind of just going to get stuck, and now, as the Death Prophet dies, they're just going to get dismantled. I mean, the reality is, Bristle just doesn't do a lot of damage. I mean, that's weird to say, because right now, he's plus 280. He's, he's just going to get kited. He has no Abyssal, doesn't have attack speed, right, besides Yasha. And, yeah, they get completely kited out. Secret makes the defense, and it's an easily won fight. On top of that, they're able to turn it into two quick towers, which really dismantles the map. Of thunder predator now thunder predator being the beast that they are they don't give up mo team liquid you guys remember that series between og and team liquid and the finals they're like all right guys they when they picked the bristle the the bristle death ball comp they're like all right we lost the fight but this is our only timing in the game that we can win and so let's do it again and so they did it again but uh the same thing's gonna happen and yeah this is actually where i'll basically end the replay analysis after we watch how they execute it. It's going to be the same thing, but the, the, the idea is very important. Kite the enemy team into you. Even if you don't have a Monkey King, kite the enemy team into you. Force them to separate themselves. Because you know what happens when they separate themselves? You use Scream, Tusk Punch, everything. Everything on one hero. And the hero like DP, which usually with Cheese Yules and Ulti and Spear Siphon that would be tanky, instantly dies. And in pubs, yes, it's hard to burst people, but also they're going to have less items and worse positioning. So the point still stands. But that's a great spear. Honestly, a bit of a miscommunication from Secret there. They they kicked the Bristle out of the Monkey King ulti, but it's kind of besides the point because you'll see that even though this Monkey King ulti doesn't really zone out the enemy team, it sort of does, right? It sort of does. It It's going to force them to take this really weird path where they all have to walk to the left, right? And you know, when, when that happens, you know, it's very easy to get vision, right? Nisha being the beast that he is identifies the only threat really from the enemy team, which is, which is the Earth Shaker, so... Just BKB ulti just removes him from the fight. MJZ tries to get the Glimmer off. It's not enough. So, uh, yeah, they both get removed. The <laughs> she had a DD too, which was very fortunate. But nonetheless, I mean, even though the Death Prophet ends up killing him. <laughs> oh, oh, my God. They kicked them all the way into the base, man. All the way in. You know, even if Thunder Predator could fight them, 
pretty hard to fight them in your fountain. And so funny enough, Thunder Predator ended up getting a Rax from that, but the net worth just continues to swing in Secret's favor. Monkey King is almost level 25, and you guys, you know when this hero hits 25, things get pretty ridiculous. They even gave him the 30-minute tome to get to that, and so you could see the priority on Matumba Man and Team Secret to get him level 25. The double Wukong's commander, you know, when it just becomes literally, I mean, it's so big! It's like me, it's so big, you know, and so it's just very, very hard to play into it. You know, even though they take a fight without it, they catch out the Shaker. Basically, if they kill the Shaker, I don't know, these fights are very hard. They have no stuns. Without Shaker, they cannot stun anybody. They can slow people, but they cannot stun him. I mean, they do even have, you know, to be fair, a Basher from Bristol, but that's not good enough. And the fight breaks out. Matama Man mans up. That was pretty risky, I'll be honest. He nearly didn't win, which shows how broken Death Prophet is. Like, even a Monkey King Oti and Scotty and Basher and Abyssal, it still doesn't matter. She still almost kills you, which is so, so dumb. It's so dumb. But yeah, they win the fight, they kite them out, great spear back into the arena, and they win the fight. And yeah, that's going to be about where this game ends, as Team Seeker will eventually just death Paul down mid here, uh, with no buyback on the Bristle and the Death Prophet. That's going to be a tier 3 for Team Seeker, but the net worth is, you know, it's getting pretty insane, 24,000. Uh, you know, as I said, Thunder Predator has heroes that fight well without items. So they have a chance, right? They have the Venno, they have Bristle, and they have Death Prophet. Three heroes that, with even with average at worth, pump out damage. But now Matama Man's like, uh, I think I should buy BKB, which, yeah, I would agree with. I mean, because no matter how far ahead you are against Death Prophet, she just sucks you based on your max HP, which is so dumb. And then, yep, the, this is where Monkey King starts to counter Bristle back, uh, you know, even though he ends up getting out of it, which is what I talked about earlier. Oh, wait, no, I talked about it in the draft analysis. Um, it's just not, it's, it's just not enough. They end up going down. Now he's just way too tanky. With the BKB, he's full HP as he goes on to the Death Prophet. So even though they drop the Wombo combo, it's not enough. They win the fight and that's going to be all. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you on the Game Link website for the other analysis. And yeah, adios. And that's all, but remember, before you leave, come on, before you tune out, subscribe to the Game Leap website where we are going to help you get to the next rank. If you're stuck, click the link down below and I'm out. Peace.